Wales went tough in the first quarter, but England's class shone through in the end. My name's Mark. Let's talk rugby. This was a tight affair early on. Wales really looking up for this one, putting England under some pressure, forcing some penalties and keeping them out from scoring as well. Wales actually take the lead after 14 minutes, Kira Bevan uh, putting over a penalty, which unfortunately for them turned out to be their only score of the game. But they did manage to contain England in that first quarter. England then, they try to attack from a scrum and just get something going. They get Dow on the wing and Newman smashes her into touch. But I think Dow uh, took that a bit personally because her performance from then was just amazing. Um, England finally do get on the board. They put it through the hands and there's a peach of a pass that puts Abby Dow in behind close to the line. Good scramble from Wales to stop her going over, but then Lucy Packer snipes from the base of the rook, converted by Singh, 7 3, England in front. Then we have more great work from Wales at the breakdown as Georgia Evans wins a penalty. Wales kick it up the line. They maul it well and then they decide to chuck it up, but the ball is slow. They lose some momentum. Then England get in over the ball and win the penalty. England then back on attack. Wales knock it on deliberately, it's just a penalty. England decide to go to the corner, set up a mall. Wales halt the mall pretty well, but then England um, kick the ball through and Heard gets to it first to score. Conversions miss 12-3 to England. Wales trying to respond before half time, but they knock on, they give the scrum to England. England then win a penalty at the scrum to go quickly from that. Aitchison Lovely long pass out to Dow on the wing. She then slaloms through the Welsh defence to score. It's converted by Singh, Rat 19-3, and that was our halftime score. Great performance from Wales early on, but it's England who deservedly lead. Start of the second half then, Calder makes a break for Wales, but gets isolated. Wales start finding gaps, but support running needs to be a lot better, like you know, the only people who arrived there were in white shirts. And, you know, if, if they are going to improve, things like that have to have to improve as well. She needs to have options when she makes a break. And her only option was to hang on to the ball and that gave her the penalty. England go up the line with that. And then they strike from the line out. Quick ball. At, Atchison runs. Um a loop and then her puts her through a hole and then she's got women outside her but she decides to back herself and goes over to score conversions misses 24-3 bonus point for england wales again they try to respond they go through some phases not making much ground you know um compared to like the first two rounds where you know against ireland and scotland their big girls are able to make you know a lot of headway. Um, England able to stop them. They've got you know uh, big units themselves. They then turn them over and they strike. Tight head Sarah Byrne goes through a gap like you know a centre or a winger. Lovely fend and then a beaut of a pass. One handed pass inside the breach. Who goes on to score under the post? Byrne. She's got some skill set for a prop. I know she used to play in the centres, but it's like, you know, people talk about um, Tyke Furlong and his ability, but Burn is just on another level, I think, in terms of overall skill set for a prop. It's converted about 33, thir- sorry, 31-3, and it seems like game, game over at that stage. Burn then, she pops up on the left wing, combines with her fellow prop, Carson, and they, you know, make some good ground. Ball goes infield then, and England get in behind. Abby Dow holds the cover and then puts Kildun over. That's converted for uh, 38-3. 
Kate Williams then gets a yellow card for a shoulder to Marley Packer's head. Packer was falling, so there was mitigation and it wasn't a red card. England go to the corner, work it infield, and Maud Muir goes over to score under the post. Wales can't really handle them at the moment. There's just too much power coming from this England team. It's converted for 45-3. England then, they come back again. They tap a five-meter penalty. They've got a nice set move with plenty of options and dummy runners. And then Barterman goes over to score. It's converted for 52-3. Marley Parker then gets a yellow card for a high hit. Welsh player was falling due to another tackle, so there's mitigation. England down to 14, but... There's a second incident in the same passage of play. Another high hit from May Campbell this time. She gets a yellow card. Very similar incident to the other two yellows. We're now at 14B13. Wales, they try to exploit the extra woman, but again, they get isolated and turned over. Maud Muir um, has to throw into a lineup for England because... There is no hooker on the field. She throws it to Wales and they work it upfield. And um, they're back to 50 now. So they've got two extra women. But again, Botterman gets over the ball, wins the penalty for England. England then score again. And they look like the team that has two extra women. There's really big carries. They suck in that Welsh defence. And you can see just space all over the pitch. And they exploit it. Beckett um, from f- five meters out just goes through Welsh defenders like their children trying to tackle her. It's converted for 59 3, and that was our final score. Now, let's have a look at some of the stats from the game. So, start with um, possession. So, it was. Um, 58 to 42 in favour of Wales territory, 47 53. England having a bit more of that. Wales with a lot of ball, but again, they looked, you know, very slow in attack. And as soon as, you know, the big carries weren't paying off for them, they didn't seem to know what to do from there. They had no kind of plan B in terms of, you know, set moves or anything like that to, to try and open up the English defence in another way. In By contrast, England, it didn't really matter what number was on a player's back. They, they all knew how to carry, how to offload, how to pass, how to exploit gaps. And it just shows the, the difference between the teams still, even though Wales do have some professional contracts, England have an entire you know, pool of players who are professional to choose from and been professional for a while now as well. So Wales with a lot of work to get there. Then big telling stat, Brooks between zero and three seconds, Wales 48%, England 75 Like the Welsh ball just too slow for them to really, you know, exploit England because England would have their defense set most of the time where the ball come out and they have so many big players ready to hit you when you're carrying and yeah there was no way that, that Wales could generate momentum really turnovers one then four for Wales seven for England some really good interventions at the breakdown for England especially from the likes of Bodderman who came off the bench and won some really good penalty turnovers when Wales were trying to get themselves, you know, back into the game. Line breaks then, one for Wales, 10 for England. Again, just, you know, talks about one on one side, Wales, how they they couldn't dent that English defence and find it very hard to create any space, whereas England were just exploiting space from all over the pitch. Tackle percentage then, 77% for Wales. Falling off tackles, you know, against um, some very big players on the English team. But even like the, the slighter players, the, you can see that the, their body positions going into contact really helped, helped them to slip tackles as well. England, 96%, really great from them, like not really giving Wales any kind of a snip in the game. Penalty conceded then, 16 from Wales, 9 from England. Spoke about 
um, it in the, the preview of this game as well, that Wales needed to be on the right side of the penalty count to have any chance in this one, and they just weren't able to. You know, the, the England side are just at the moment too good for them, and that pressure leads to those penalties. Now, in terms of the two teams from here, so Wales, they said that this game would kind of show where they were relative to, you know, the, the top teams. And I don't think they expected the scoreline when their head coach, head coach said that. Um, they did keep it close for most of the first half, but England could handle their physicality, unlike the Irish and the Scots. And they look slow in possession and they often lost momentum and then England would get in and turn them over. They improve, but it just shows there's still a gulf between them and England and they've got a lot, but they do have a lot more development to go in this squad. So like, you know, this isn't the best this squad is going to get. They are going to, to improve. They're on, you know, the kind of the start of their journey into professionalism and, you know, you can see from the first two games that there is um, a lot of improvement in the squad and I expect that could to continue in the coming seasons. England, um, you know, they didn't panic when Wales were ahead for most of that first half. They trusted each other, trusted the processes, and they took their chances when they came. When they went down to 13, they went direct and they made Wales tackle. And, you know, it was very big women running at that Welsh defence, meaning that like two or three had to tackle them. And that way then, by committing so many players to the tackles and to rooks, they were able to create space, even though they had two women less. And, you know, they they showed Wales that they're not the only team that can be physical in the game. England, they have the silky skills, but they also have the ability to get down and dirty and really you know, bring it to you physically as well. They are now still on course for that Grand Slam showdown with France, and that's shaping up to be quite the game.